In fact, it would be fair to say that in physics everything is a wave. Because when particles like the electron um, were understood better uh, by uh, Paul Dirac, who found out the equation describing the electron, what did he do? He tried to write down a wave equation. Uh, that was the route to discovering. The electron obeys a wave equation, even though it's a particle. Uh, as I'll explain in a moment, uh, every entity we know on, of in nature has this dual facet. It's both a wave, it travels along like the waves I showed you, um, and it's also a particle. And so uh, it, uh, every particle we know has this property. In fact, you have this property. You probably don't feel like a wave, <laughs> but I can assure you, you are a wave. According to quantum mechanics, you're a wave, and it spreads. <laughs> okay. Fortunately, it doesn't spread much in our lifetimes, <laughs> but uh, you are all spreading waves, I can assure you. Now, having discovered that physics works through waves and through this back-and-forth motion described so nicely by the imaginary number, uh, which, by the way, electri any electrical engineer will tell you they know I very well. It's a very useful trick. But having discovered all that, there was one huge problem. You see, waves don't really make sense in the physical world. I, if Maxwell was right, was absolutely right, that light was a wave and that was the end of the story, none of the world we know would work. And the reason has to do with heat. Okay, so let's look at the sun. This is a beautiful movie of uh, the sun. It should be a movie. I think it's frozen. Let me try and start it up again. There we go. So, uh, look at the sun. Uh, it's obviously, um, it's obviously uh, very hot. It's shining at a certain uh, is shining at light at a certain wavelength, the wavelength of visible light, which is a fraction of a millionth of a meter, fraction of a micrometer. micrometer. Um, if light, if, um, if waves really existed, as in Maxwell's theory, with no other caveats, the sun could not exist for the following reason. You see, waves can carry energy. And the problem is that if you allow waves of arbitrary wavelength, you can fit an arbitrary number of those waves into any volume of space. Okay, so say we're sitting in this room, and I want to tell you about all the possible waves of the tiniest little wavelength you could imagine. How many waves could you fit in the room? Well, as many as you like because I can make them as small as you like. Okay, because they're, they're there, they're waves, they're solutions to Maxwell's equation. The trouble is if there really was this infinity of possible short waves, they would carry the heat of the sun away in an instant. Because the efficiency with which, uh, which um, they, uh, well, it's when the sun reaches what we call equilibrium, thermal equilibrium. What is thermal equilibrium? It's when things jangle around randomly and explore all of the possibilities. And there's a fundamental property is that they tend to share out the energy among all possibilities. It's called equipartition. They share out energy. The trouble is you've got this infinite number of short wavelength things that you could share the energy with. Well, that's what's going to happen. The, light would, the sun would go out in a puff of smoke. Okay, so if Maxwell was true, the sun couldn't exist. And it's true of any hot object. The only thing that saves the day is that light isn't a wave. <laughs> okay? It's a particle. And that's what Max Planck discovered in 1900. Planck was hired by the German Bureau of Standards to help design light bulbs that would be more efficient. They needed to emit the maximum possible amount of light in visible wavelengths. And so that was his task. And so he had to make a theory of 
why is it why is it that a hot wire glows at a certain temperature or a certain wavelength hot wire of a certain temperature why why is there a corresponding wavelength and the more he tried the more confused he got nothing made any sense because he kept losing all the energy into infinitely short waves there are just so many of them and uh, so he hit upon a simple idea that light refuses to carry energy except in packets which depend on the wavelength of the light. So the short wavelength light, the very little waves, are incredibly fussy. The energy they carry is huge. And basically it says, if you don't have enough energy for me to, to take, I'm not taking any. <laughs> and, and that's the consequence of why the sun is stable. So if you want to know, so Planck, Planck's law was that the energy light carries is a new constant of nature called Planck's constant times the frequency of the light. Frequency is higher the shorter the wavelength. And so uh, now if you, um, if you, uh, if you look at the, the sun, uh, we, know the, um, we know the temperature of the sun, we know the energy which is carried by, the, uh, by, uh, by each uh, light wave. It's given by the temperature. And uh, we also know the frequency of visible light. Just take the ratio and you get Planck's constant. Okay, so the sun directly tells, if we know the temperature and we know the wavelength of light, we just read off Planck's constant from the sun. Okay, so uh, nature gives us these clues. It tells us the answer we just have to be smart enough to listen. Well, I